Namaste, Venus lovers. This is Dr. Danny. How is everybody today? Oh, man, I'm so good. As you guys can probably notice behind me, the scenery has changed a little bit. Uh, the video that I put out for Monday, I had no furniture. I just had the desk and the computer and internet. Now I have some furniture, so it's super exciting. I'm still looking for some pieces. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that they're in a box somewhere. So we're still in that process. But at any rate, I'm super excited to be bringing you this Venus through Gemini transit in my, uh, in my brand new space. Uh, so there's a couple of things we're going to do first before we dive into the transits for uh, Venus and Gemini. I want to review the last week of Taurus with you. Let me first, um, so we'll do that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Venus um, in Gemini, what that means. And then we are going to briefly, I promise you, briefly review celestial mechanics. And then we're going to dive deep into the transits. And then I have a little surprise for you all about halfway through. All right. So let me just share my screen real quick. And I want y'all to go to, in order to kind of get the last week of of Taurus, I want you to review the last Venus transits I did. That was for April 5th to May 5th. Okay. And in the last segment of that, there's timestamps in the description, as well as in the comments, you can go right to that week and, and get the energy of those transits. I also uh, go really deep into Mercury retrograde, which we're right in the middle of right now. Mercury goes direct again on May 14th. So it's a big part of the Venus energy. So you definitely wanna watch that video. And then this one uh, was really good. I did a quick 20 minute energy update and I talk about Mercury retrograde, Pluto retrograde, and then this beautiful um, moon, Venus, Neptune, mystic square with the galactic center. So do check out those three videos right there, just, just to get yourself updated on the last week of Taurus. Before we jump into Gemini, you can pause this video. I won't mind. Okay. Um, so Venus uh, begins her transit into Gemini on May 6th. She will transit through the constellation of Gemini until about May 29th, May 30th, when she enters the sign of cancer. So let's just talk a little bit about Venus real quick. I mean, why, why do we care about Venus? Well, I love Venus. I have Taurus rising. So if any of you have either Taurus or Libra rising, or you have Venus on your ascendant, or you have Venus in another position, or you just love that beautiful, amazing luminary in the sky, and you like to watch her movements, this is going to be a great journey for you to come on with me. Uh, so Venus attains enlightenment through experience of the senses. That's how she does it. She just has to feel everything, let everything kind of flow through her. And then that's when she uh, can create. Um, and now she's into Mercury's constellation, which is Gemini. And how does Mercury attain enlightenment and wisdom? Through knowledge, right? So wisdom through the senses, wisdom through knowledge. Now we're combining that energy with Venus going into Gemini. I also kind of see Gemini as a gateway. You see that, you know, when you look at the symbol for Gemini, it's, it's basically the two pillars. So, you know, as she shifts from Taurus to Gemini, she changes her focus a little bit. It's no longer about her house and kind of feeling things out and deciding what she values and what she wants to take on this next journey around the Zodiac. Uh, now it's about transmitting and receiving, which is what Gemini is all about. And this is through Mercury's home of learning and communicating. So this should be an interesting um, several weeks, about three and a half weeks for the Venus energy to finally take what she values and become more of a communicator. So, but the way Venus acquires knowledge is a little bit different than Mercury. So this, so for Venus, the information actually has to be interesting to her. Um, she has to actually feel the alchemy of the knowledge working within her and through her. Um, it's almost like a, I don't know if, you ever, if any of you have ever been inspired, you know, you get a download of something that's very Venus. It's like, I have all the knowledge or like when Neo's plugged into the matrix and all of a sudden he knows Kung Fu. Like it's downloaded and he can do it in his mind. And that's, that's very Venus energy. Um, so she literally has to drink it in. She's got to roll around in it. She's got to feel it on her body, um, 
What's really interesting too about Venus this month is you're going to notice her slowing down. And I'm going to show you a really cool um, website you can go to, to, to kind of fast forward and reverse Venus movements. And you can see what she'll look like from the sky from her own perspective. So I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to do a little celestial mechanics. Just bear with me. I find this stuff absolutely fascinating and absolutely incredibly beautiful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, Venus through the solar system. Okay, so we're going to move this if we can. Oh my gosh, zoom. There we go. Okay, so this is when, this is coming up. This is in about three months. Venus is going to be at an inferior conjunction with Earth. So this is the Sun, Venus, and Earth. And this is actually how there is movement through time. Venus is a faster moving planet. Do you see that? So now we're back in May. This is basically when her transit through Gemini starts. And you may not be able to see this as well in this demonstration, but as we move forward on the days, I'm just gonna go day by day. From our perspective, Venus is going to slow down. And then she's gonna make this really peculiar move and she's gonna appear to go retrograde. Well, actually she is going retrograde from our perspective, but it will look like she's moving backwards as opposed to moving forwards and higher and higher in the sky. So this should be an interesting time when she goes retrograde because look what happens. She gets so close to planet Earth. So this is what we're watching. We're just kind of feeling this energy out because this is a really special conjunction. This is different from the inferior conjunction that we started on at the end of October last year. I'll take you back to that real quick. Look at that, I'm so fast. So what you'll see here is Venus and Earth on the opposite side. This is also a conjunction, but this is a superior conjunction. So we are heading toward an inferior conjunction, which my hypothesis is, is that when planets are retrograde or racing towards us or on our side of the sun, their energy is way more powerful. So let's look at Stellarium real quick. This is uh, a couple of days ago. Let's move up to the six, by the way, where's the sun, y'all? Aries, I thought so. It's not in Taurus, like the tropical astrologers are telling you. Taurus to them is literally just a month. Okay, we are we are working in the actual sky with this astrology. So I feel like this is a lot more powerful and a lot more relevant if you're following the spiritual tenets of as above, so below. All right, so we'll go slow at first. And then I want I want you to kind of see the same thing that's happening, but from an earth's perspective, like actually on the earth. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Oops, 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 oops. This is really cool if you can um, kind of see what I'm seeing. So watch Venus over the next several days. Now remember, you're on planet Earth just watching this, okay? She's just transited through Gemini. Watch what she does as she gets through Cancer. It's really close to Mars. Uh-oh, what is she doing? She's going retrograde. That's her turning towards us and heading between us and the sun. So here it is. This is your inferior conjunction coming up this summer. It's going to be spectacular, you guys. Um, okay, so that's that. And then I wanted to show you one more thing. This is such a cool video. I, I showed you this in the first video, but this is definitely worth a review. Watch the path that Venus traces from the Earth's perspective. Like this is a geocentric model. Look at that. You see that? That right there. Let me pause this real quick. That is a star point. This is an inferior conjunction when she does this little loop right here. And that's what we're headed for in August, late July, August. Okay, so let's just keep watching. I want you to see this pattern that comes out. This is actually really quite amazing. And this is why Venus is related to the Fibonacci sequence, which encodes the golden ratio. So in order for her to make this five pointed star pattern that she's tracing out, uh, so five points, 
takes her eight Earth orbits. She does it 13 times. So she goes around the sun 13 times. The Earth goes around the sun eight times. Together, they trace out this five pointed star pattern. So it's one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13. That is the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. And the 13th number of the Fibonacci sequence, by, by the way, guys, is 144. Okay. So I'm not making this stuff up. This is astronomy and astrology. And this is one sacred science. This is not some fun game on the side of the road or in some, uh, you know, hotel lobby. This is, this is the energies we're working with. We are part of a giant cosmos. Okay. Um, so let me see. I showed you all those things. Let me just show you. Okay. We're done with that. Let me show you a chart. So you can also see the movements that we've been discussing. All right, so this is October 24th. This is when she was in her. And the reason I'm showing you this chart is because when we get to the full moon that happened the day before her Venus, her, her Gemini transit started, Venus was in an, a superior conjunction with the sun. So in other words, she was on the other side of the sun. It was also a new moon and it was also in Virgo, cusp of Virgo Leo, okay? So she was being burned up by the sun. There was no Inanna goddess energy here. There was no Isis energy here. Those, those of you who are Venusians and follow Venus energy may have felt pretty bad right around here. And I remember I did. I was like, I don't have any inspiration. I don't know what I'm going to do next. It was pretty rough. And then when she started becoming the evening star and now she's real high up in the sky, man, it feels good. So this is what we're watching. So we're going to move up to right around now. And then we're going to back up a little bit to May 6th. And this is the full moon uh, the day before. So you can see very cuspy moon near Virgo, uh, kind of reminding Venus, like what, you know, where have you been and where are you going? And what do you really need to take with you on this journey? What can you let go of? Do you have faith and do you have trust? Okay, so this, this stuff is amazing. I, um, I'm getting ready to dive deep in the transits with you. We're gonna go ahead and look at the transit map and kind of get an overview of the energies and then I'll dive in deep and then we'll be finished. Oh, and then I do have that surprise for you. So please stick with me. I'm so sorry, here we go. Um, let's see the transit map. So yeah, once again, it was a little um, elbow grease and tenacity just to kind of give you guys a picture of how I see the energies. And you can even see here where I messed up with my marker. I just turned it into a flower. That's that's what Venusians do. It's, it's all fine. Uh, so this is the uh, transit grid. And everything we talked about, everything that's in those videos I showed you are right here. And this is the full moon that we just discussed. So... Saturday begins her transit through Gemini. She's about to enter that gate. The first aspect she hits is squaring onto Saturn in Aquarius. Mercury is still retrograde and Venus square Neptune is still very relevant in terms of energies. Um, as we move through uh, next Thursday <clears throat> or the 11th, uh, Venus will sextile Mercury for about four days. Then on Saturday, the 13th, the sun enters the constellation of Taurus. Mercury uh, stations direct the very next day after. Then we have, uh, we still have our uh, Venus uh, trine Saturn right here, but now Venus becomes conjunct Sirius. So this one's a big one. We're going to talk about this where she is conjunct Sirius and trine Saturn. <clears throat> and also there's actually, <clears throat> excuse me, a big, uh, there's a, there's a, a bigger energy that's associated with this too, but I'll go into that when we get there. And then on the 19th, there's going to be some shift in energy. We're going to have a new moon in Taurus and Venus is going to square Chiron and Pisces. So 
a little bit of a shifty energy here. It, it's not an eclipse, but it sure as hell might be, you know, with Chiron kind of being squared to our beautiful princess energy. Uh, I'm going to go into that a little bit. And then over here, we've got Venus sextile Uranus for about, uh, about a week. This is some really nice energy uh, while we're being squared upon here. Uh, then on Saturday, the 27th, Venus trines Neptune and Pisces. So she started with a square. Now she's going to trine her. Uh, then, uh, then we get to the end of the transit where she begins her um, entrance into Cancer. But what's coming up at the end of this transit is going to be a little bit interesting for all of those with Venus placements because Venus is going to oppose Pluto. And we all know what Pluto is doing right now. Pluto is um, uh, squaring the nodes. So what we may be having is a, um, you know, a mystic square with uh, Venus and Pluto opposing one another and the nodes opposing that. And this is longer because as I showed you before, Venus slows down. So by the end of this transit, she's gotten a lot, 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 lot slower. Okay. And then also in the middle of this, Mars and Pluto do, uh, do the mystic square. Okay. So Venus is headed for the same energy. Basically, um, let's just dive in. So that's that Venus trying Saturn, uh, sextile the node, sextile trying the node. So basically she sextile the North node and um, trying the South node. So you end up with this kite on the, uh, on the natal chart. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, but Mars was doing that for the longest time too, about two, three weeks ago. Mars has completed that uh, trine with Saturn and has moved on into the constellation of Cancer by the 10th. So Venus is taking the place. So she's following in his footsteps. And one of the really interesting things about this Venus cycle is where she started from at the beginning of Libra, she has from then till now has passed over every single uh, luminary and planet in the sky, at least once. And she hasn't caught up to Mars yet to overtake him. And that, that won't actually happen until next year. It's actually really, really interesting. So we're, we're kind of watching Venus and Mars just a little bit as she gets closer to him when she stations retrograde. Guys, they get close enough to kiss, but she doesn't actually overtake the Mars energy. Um, so valuing responsibility and duty, remembering where we came from, remembering where we're going. Saturn and Aquarius brings a structure to the new creations of Venus. Uh, this energy can also magnetize resources to the manifestation of this creation. So if you are, are uh, in, in the sort of the Neptune Venus cloud right now that a lot of us are in, literally by the time that washes over us, by the 10th, we should have some really nice energy to really begin creating. It's a good time to start communicating being in Gemini. So. Um, so I'm really excited about this transit. Uh, the, the node part of it kind of goes off and on every other day or so, but essentially you're going to have Venus trining Saturn for almost two weeks, two whole weeks. Um, the moon opposes Venus for a short time on Monday the 8th. The moon will be in the galactic center in the constellation of Ophiuchus. This is going to be basically two divine, two versions of the divine feminine in a balancing act. So the moon in Ophiuchus feels like, like a divine motherly sort of energy, like very sacred, uh, very spiritual. Uh, whereas as Venus is kind of coming off that square with Neptune, really feeling that trine with Saturn, she's going to be held back a little bit, not only by the moon, but also by uh, the Neptune square. And this is all for our benefit. Like you can skip out on these energies. You don't have to but do anything different, basically go with the flow, um, feel that Venus energy and kind of feel it. I promise you, when you look back, you'll be like, wow, man, Danny was right. <laughs> um, on the 10th, Mars transits into Cancer. So, so Mars and Cancer is a very different energy than Mars and Gemini. Mars and Gemini is a little bit, um, a little bit uh, bipolar, like really quiet, then really talkative, and then an idea over here, then an idea over there. Whereas Mars and Cancer is very indirect. It's like, um, um, what do they call it? Passive aggressive almost energy. So watch your sacred masculine. He may be just sort of like mm, inactive, you know, but active in the mind and then like does something you don't expect. So that's, that's kind of that energy for me for Cancer. 
On the 11th, Venus sextiles Mercury retrograde in Aries. So this is an opportunity for optimism, beauty in business. Venus um, is going to really love to be inspired uh, by relationships. So the, the communication, the talking, there might even be some erotic conversations going on uh, with that energy uh, the later part of next week. Uh, so check out that one. Again, a sextile, guys, is really just an opportunity. So you don't have to have erotic conversations, but if you want to, they're going to go really well over that weekend. Um, then on Saturday the 13th, as we discussed, uh, the sun transits into the energy of Taurus. So we have a very different energy than uh, Aries. Aries is, I am, I'm doing, this is what I do. Whereas Taurus is like, let's just... Can we just enjoy a little bit? Do we have to keep changing things? Can we just relax and smell the roses? So there might be a lot of that out there. Um, at the same time, the moon is going to conjunct Saturn. So you have a moon Saturn energy in Aquarius, and then you've got Venus and Gemini. And so this is basically time to check in with your responsibilities, right? Venus trining Saturn, how do you feel about it? What's coming up for you? It's important to be honest with Saturn because Saturn, you know, it's okay whatever you choose, but you got to be honest with Saturn. Otherwise, you're going to have a tough time. You're going to be feel ugh, choked by him. Uh, then Mercury, our little friend, stations direct on the 14th. This means that Mercury is racing away from us. So all that overload that we were feeling during retrograde of all the information and everything breaking and things stopping working, that should get a little bit better. But it may also be harder for those of you that channel creative ideas uh, that speak to the divine through writing or um, uh, speaking, <laughs> you know, it might be a little bit more difficult for you. The, the the energy might get more sporadic as Mercury heads towards its superior conjunction uh, later this summer. On the 15th, the moon in Pisces squares Venus. So this might feel like boredom that leads to feeling helpless. Uh, you might actually get messages that you don't wanna hear um, on a day like this where the moon squares Venus. And then you guys, oh my gosh, this, this is beautiful energy. Venus is going to conjunct the star Sirius. Now, Sirius is not actually in the ecliptic. It, um, uh, this, the Orion's belt points down to um, the constellation of Canis Major, where the brightest star is, uh, Sirius, but they kind of move across the sky together. And when you look in a chart, they're, they're conjunct um, within uh, seven to 10 degrees, usually, is when we say they're conjunct. So this is when that starts for Venus. She's basically going to kind of swoop over Sirius because Sirius is a fixed star. It never moves. And I feel like this is a great time for Venus because Venus is the divine feminine. She's Isis. She's Inanna. She is Sirius star. She's the, the, another bright luminary in the star, in the sky associated with her and her energy. So you combine this together and you have this, uh, this beautiful time. Um, you know, this is like the luxury of, of fortune and and love, right? And it, it kind of overlaps that that uh, Venus trine Saturn energy for a little bit there. So you basically have Venus and Sirius conjunct and trine to a Saturn. Okay, so this is where I wanted to uh, kind of break in and just kind of talk about Sirius, Saturn, and and Venus energy. So if you guys will just indulge me for a moment, I. Uh, Actually, I'll share my screen real quick because I want you to see <clears throat> my website and see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, here's my website. So this is Sesha. She's an Egyptian goddess. She was a goddess in the earliest recorded history that Egyptians have, okay? She was the, uh, the first astronomer, astrologer, architect, mathematician, uh, physician. She taught uh, Imhotep everything he knows <laughs> so that he could communicate it to the people. I had uh, several visions of Sashat in different settings. Uh, the first one, she was very upset with uh, the way that astrology has been going. 
Um, and I felt her energy. It was, it wasn't like she was angry at me. She was just irritated. And she, I felt like she's reaching out to me. The second time I, um, I witnessed her working in her space, which uh, was outside and it was dusk and she was, you know, pulling little bits of uh, mechanical pieces together. Some of it was glowing, some of it wasn't. Um, and uh, she was just working. She was just very content in the work. It looked like she was getting ready for something really, really important, okay? Then I had a third vision, but it wasn't her necessary. I mean, I think it was because I saw the leopard. I saw the leopard and the leopard was playing with a child. And at first I thought the leopard was trying to kill the child, but then the leopard was very loving to the child. And honestly, I'm still trying to figure out what that one means. But essentially after, in between that second and third vision, I came up with this image. This image literally just landed in my head. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is, this is Venus on top of Saturn. And this is the sigil for the star series. Seven times to match, I call it the antenna of Seshet. Okay. So... <laughs> So this, this energy is important to me. I gotta share my screen again, because in my natal chart, I'm gonna show you guys, <clears throat> I have this conjunction in Gemini, which is right, right now. Okay, it's right, right now. <laughs> so this is my chart. This is Saturn, Sirius and Venus conjunct in Gemini. All right. So this is the symbol. This is my symbol. This is my symbol to transmit the information to you that comes from the goddess herself to uh, teach you how to use your Venus energy for creation and for power. Um, and it just moved me so much that I, uh, I went ahead. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to show you guys. this. I went ahead and I got a tattoo. Okay, I'm not showing everybody this, but I guess I am now. And I put I put this on my arm. Okay, so this is my symbol. This is what um, I'm here to transmit. This is Venus. It's still kind of gross because I just got it Friday, but this is Venus and Saturn and the Sirius symbol. Okay, so isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, intermission's over. Let's finish these transits because it's going to get interesting after. <clears throat> this beautiful, serious transit gets going. <clears throat> okay, also, I'm probably gonna do an article or a video about this later. Mars and Pluto, Mystic Square, the nodes for a long time. Uh, so we're gonna dive into that energy later in a different video. Uh, so what happens for Venus then after that beautiful combination of Saturn with a trine or the conjunction, Venus is going to square Chiron in Pisces, okay? Ooh, so Pisces and Gemini are a natural square, uh, but Sirius is in the mix too. So I'm not sure how bad it's gonna be, but I will tell you that as a physician for women, women have a lot of big wounds inside of them. We are not as confident as we think we are. We, you know, we are not as perfect as we think we are. Uh, you know, we have all kinds of thoughts running through our head on a regular basis, trying to sort of <clears throat> tame our energy and put us down. And it's because of the programming. It's because of how women are supposed to be or how they're supposed to act or how that divine feminine energy is supposed to play out. And with Chiron in Pisces, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the collective wound of the divine feminine. This is it right here. And it starts on a new moon in Taurus, <laughs> her, home, uh, her home constellation. So I think conjunct Sirius, uh, the new moon in Taurus, I think she's got a lot of plus on her side to maybe finally become healed. But here's some of the things that that the divine feminine wound is. One of them's imposter syndrome. So Chiron's gonna make you feel dumb, like you're the dumbest one in the room, even though you maybe are the expert. That's what Chiron's gonna make you feel. Uh, do you have low self-worth? Chiron is gonna make you feel absolutely useless. Are you afraid of people making fun of you? Oh boy, you're gonna feel like everyone's making fun of you, even though they're not. 
And anything you blame on others will become your fault. Okay. This is tough energy. The divine feminine is so wounded right now in our collective. Uh, so really pay attention to those foreign thoughts that come from Chiron, from the collective divine feminine that's wounded. If you start hearing thoughts like, man, why am I doing this? Or God, I shouldn't have said that, you know, like if you start having those kinds of thoughts, trust in your Venus energy, just, just take a step back and go, I'm okay. I'm healed. I'm perfect the way I'm made. I know what I'm talking about. You know, I am, I am beautiful and I don't care what any of you say. Like that's, that's literally how Venus can come with this energy. I'm getting a little teary eyed about that. It's true though. This is a big thing. And I see it every day. I see it every single day in my office. So, but Sirius can give you a reason to let all that shit go because this is a very, 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 very auspicious star. Sirius can help you rewrite your past and change the timeline of your future. Chiron square Sirius is when Osiris was broken into pieces. In this period of time when Osiris was split open, time didn't exist. So the past, the present, and the future are all the same, meaning that you've got the ability to go back in time in your mind or in a meditation and heal yourself, heal the shit out of yourself. This will be a beautiful time to do that. You don't need that lover that ghosts you. You don't need people that don't like you. You don't need to be forgiven for who you are. I mean, you can make yourself better if you want to, but check by whose standards that is. And I would just recommend loving yourself the way you are. Whew. On Monday, the 22nd, the moon conjuncts Venus and Sirius. So here we've got a little bit more of that gorgeous divine energy the same day that Venus sextiles Uranus. So if you're doing this Venus square Chiron right, you can start this week with some really fun and crazy energy. I just love Venus and Uranus together when they aspect well, because it could be crazy sex somewhere. It could be a new lover that you meet that you never thought you would ever be with. Um, a crazy uh, wild experience in relationship to how Venus experiences the world through her senses. Okay, so this can be a very, very nice time Plus Venus, you're going to be trining on two Pisces very shortly on Saturday the 27th. So you started at square Pisces, a little lost in the mist, fuzzy boundaries, vastness that you couldn't quite understand. Now it's clear. Now you're bringing it down because you're in Gemini and you're trining on Pisces. Um, this incidentally is when I'll be starting a, a two week road trip with my, uh, with my husband for our 25th wedding anniversary. So I am going to be using some of that energy for sure. Um, so then that, that, uh, there's one more moon right there, a moon, uh, yeah, opportunity for romance. So the moon sextiles Venus. Okay. So you've got moon conjunct Venus, conjunct Sirius, Venus sextiling Uranus and Aries. Venus trining on Pisces, the moon sextiling Venus. That ends that Chiron square, that Venus Chiron square. So really tap into that little voice when it sounds so foreign and it says, you're ugly, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. Shut her the fuck up because you are. And you have a lot of beautiful energy here to really express yourself uh, in a loving way, in a Venusian way, in a crazy way with Uranus. Okay. The very last day of this transit, Venus starts a opposition with Pluto. I'm going to save this for cancer. Cause I feel like we really went along on this one with all the things I was sharing with you guys. Um, so we will do that in the next, but the next few weeks are super, super powerful. So listen guys, um, that was really a lot of fun. I, I love sharing this with you. Uh, I can do, we can do a deep dive together, you and me into your Venus transits. I do a recorded personalized Venus transits for you. So you give me your birthday, your date and time, and 
uh, you will receive at least a 30 minute video uh, with what your Venus transits are doing. We talk about how the current Venus affects all your natal planets and how the current planets affect your natal Venus. And it can really give you a different uh, level of understanding of the transits that are coming at you. If you're new to all of this and you have no idea how to read a chart and, and all that stuff I just said made no sense to you, <laughs> I have a $13 sun, moon, and rising report that you can purchase from my website. You can also get the Venus transits report from my website. The links will be below. And then if you want to do a personal consult with me one-on-one, -on -one, 90 minutes through Zoom, I do that too. We're going to dive deep into all your personal planets. I'm going to show you where you've been, where you're going. Uh, and it'll also be recorded so you can download it later and reference it. And then, oh, this week, I'm so excited. I have gift certificates available on my website, too. It's like the perfect time for, um, you know, Mother's Day, graduation, birthdays, new babies, anything. It, um, they come in 25, 50, 75, and $100 denominations. So you give the gift of astrology to someone and, and it will be credited towards anything on my website, all my services, all my products, all my meetings. Okay. Friend me on Facebook. Check out my website, drdanny.com, where I write weekly articles to help you stay on top of the energy that's going on in the real sky. And then um, please join the Sidereal Revolution Facebook group and uh, get in the conversation with us. Subscribe to my channel, smash the like button if you enjoy this report, and stay tuned for Venus Transits through Cancer. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.